Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pricharine Nirvise Shashunyavadi Paschacha Desatarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya We're reading Bhagavad Gita as it is, Chapter 4, Transcendental Knowledge, Text Number 15. Oh, it's 14, isn't it? Sure. <laughs> huh? It should be 14. Namam karmani limpanti Name karma pales priha Iti mam yo bijanati Karma birna sabadyate Namam karmani limpanti Name karma pales priha Iti mam yo bijanati Karma birna sabadyate Namam karmani limpanti Name karma pales priha Iti mam yo bijanati Karma birna sabadyate Others can chant? Of work. All kinds of work, limpanti, limpanti. do affect, do na, na. Nor. nor, me, me. my, my. karmapale, Karma in fruit of action, action. spriha, aspiration. aspiration, iti, iti. thus, thus. Mum. mum, me, me. Ya. ya, one who, 
Abhijanati does know karma be by the reaction of such work. Na never sa he bhajate becomes entangled. Translation. There is no work that affects me, nor do I aspire for the fruits of action. One who understands this truth about me also does not become entangled in the fruits and the fruit of reactions of work. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. As there are constitutional laws in the material world stating that the king can do no wrong or that the king is not subject to the, law, to the state laws. Similarly, the Lord, although he is the creator of the material world, is not affected by the activities of the material world. He creates and remains aloof from the creation, whereas the living entities are entangled in the fruitive results of material activities because of their propensity for lording it over material resources. The proprietor of an establishment is not responsible for the right and wrong activities of the workers, but the workers are themselves responsible. The living entities are engaged in their respective activities of sense gratification. And these activities are not ordained by the Lord. For advancement, for advancement of sense gratification, the living entities are engaged in the work of this world and they aspire to heavenly happiness after death, the Lord, being full in himself, has no attraction for so-called heavenly happiness. The heavenly demigods are only, are, the he heavenly demigods are only his engaged servants. The proprietor never desires the low-grade happiness such as the workers may desire. He is aloof from the material actions and reactions. For example, the reins are not responsible for different types of vegetation that appears on the earth Although without such rains, there is no possibility of vegetative growth. Vedic Smriti confirms this fact as follows. Nimita Matra Evaso Srijanam Sarga Karmani Pradana Karana Karani Bhuta Yato Vai Srija Sakitaya. In the material creation, the Lord is only the supreme cause. The immediate cause is material nature, by which the cosmic manifestation is made visible. The created beings are of many varieties, such as the demigods, human beings, 
and lower animals, and all of them are subject to the reactions of their past good or bad activities. The Lord only gives them the proper facility for such activities and the regulations of the modes of nature, but he is never responsible for their past and present activities. In the Vedanta Sutra, it is stated, Vaishamya Nagrinye Na Sopachsatvat the Lord is never partial to, to any living entity. The living entities are responsible for their own acts. The Lord only gives him facilities through the agency of material nature, the, mater the external energy. Anyone who is fully conversant with all the intricacies of the law of karma or fruitive activities does not become affected by the results of his activities. In other words, the person who understands this transcendental nature of the Lord is an experienced man in Krishna consciousness. And thus, he is never subjected to the laws of karma. One who does not know the transcendental nature of the Lord and who thinks that the activities of the Lord are aimed at fruitive results as are the activities of ordinary living entities, certainly becomes entangled himself in fruit of free actions. But one, who, but one who knows the supreme truth is a liberated soul, fixed in Krishna consciousness. Oma jnana timarandasya jnananjana shalakaya Chaksur Unmilitanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranama Mi Hari Priye Vancha Kaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasa Dekor Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare Lord Krishna is giving us transcendental knowledge. He is explaining his relationship with the material energy, how it is all acting through the modes of nature, the living entities act in this material world, and this material energy, of course, is under his direction. It is not independent. 
the Lord himself is behind it. But at the same time, he is not responsible for the activities of the living entities. That point is made quite clear by Srila Prabhupada in the purport here. And Lord Krishna will also explain the same thing later on in Bhagavad Gita. He will say, I am not responsible for the sinful activities of the living entities. So here, Lord Krishna said, there is no work that affects him. We work in the material world, we become affected. You work, you may work very hard, you become tired. <laughs> you can work very hard. If you're successful, you may become joyful. And if you if you're fail, you become depressed. We are very much affected by our activities. And we all aspire for the fruit, to enjoy the fruit of our activities. Lord Krishna, he doesn't need to enjoy the fruits of anything because he already has everything. Everything is already his. We are always anxious trying to acquire more than what we have. We'd like to have more money. We'd like to have more power. We'd like to have more we always want to increase our condition in the material world. It's rare that people are satisfied with what they have. But actually, we're meant to cultivate the mode of goodness and we are meant to be satisfied. It's actually a Brahminical quality to be satisfied in whatever position we find ourselves. And you see this uh, point is made, Lord Krishna was residing in Dwarka and Ruk, Rukmini, she, she was uh, worried because her brother had arranged her marriage to Sishupal and Rukmini wanted to marry Krishna. You know, she had a, that desire to be the wife of Lord Krishna. So she wrote a letter to Lord Krishna and she gave it to a brahmana to go there to Dwarka and give the letter to Lord Krishna. So the brahmana came to Dwarka and met with Lord Krishna. And then Lord Krishna, before reading the letter, he first of all questioned the brahmana. How are you, my dear brahmana? Are you executing your duties as a brahmana? In other words, you know, he should be satisfied in his position as a brahmana. Um, you, you see something similar in relation to the gopis. They were approaching Lord Krishna, and Lord Krishna was telling them that, Naparayaham, I cannot repay you. You know, the gopis had given up everything for Lord Krishna. They'd sacrifice their chastity, which is the most sacred thing to a woman. But they sacrifice that for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna told them that I cannot repay you. You have to be satisfied with your own acts, with your own deeds. You have to be satisfied. In a similar mood, Devotees in Krishna consciousness, you know, we can do a lot of service, working in the temple and sometimes going out for book distribution and going out in the marathon in the December in the cold weather, going out and distributing literature. And you, you may distribute a lot of books and whatever, but... We don't get any salary, we don't get any payment for it. We have to be satisfied ourselves with the work. This is the nature of devotional service. That we don't want to get something from it, we simply want to give service to Lord Krishna. This is the, the mood of the devotees. 
We think, Lord Krishna has given me so much, I want to give something back to Krishna. What can we give to Krishna? We don't have really anything much to give to Krishna. But if we make some effort to, dis to, to distribute the glories of Lord Krishna to others, then that is most appreciated by Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna says himself in the Bhagavad Gita, Nachatas man manusheshu kasjan me priyakritama, that there's no one more dear to me than that person who is distributing this knowledge of devotional service. So when we go out and distribute books and try to preach Krishna consciousness, this is the most pleasing activity to Lord Krishna. At the same time, we, we never think that we have done anything significant for the pleasure of Krishna. We understand we're very small, we're very tiny in relation to Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna himself is the cause of the whole cosmic manifestation. Everything comes from him. Sarva karana karanam. He's the cause of all causes. But Lord Krishna is not affected by the work. We get affected by the work. We can, we can become affected by doing... So. We think, you know, we do something bad. We don't... It doesn't work very nicely. We feel very discouraged and disappointed. What have I done wrong? And if it goes well, then we feel very great. I'm so, I've done it, we've done so nicely. You know, we're very much affected by the work we do. But Lord Krishna is never affected. Srila Prabhupada begins his purport by giving an interesting example. He talks about how in, in some countries they have a monarchy you have a king here in Denmark or a queen? Yeah, you do, right? Yeah. And so generally the, the rule is that the king or the queen, they can do no wrong. You know, the, the laws are there for common people. But for the, the royal family, they're above the laws. They're transcendental. <laughs> it, it, uh, and you... Uh, in, I, I go to Ma Malaysia, and in Malaysia, they have people called, they have r rulers. The country is actually in states, and there's a ruler of each state. They don't have so much power nowadays, but in the past, of course, they were, the, 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 they were really the controllers. And now it's more a democracy. But still, there are, there are kings, there are the sultans who rule the different states, and, and they have that position. They can do no wrong. And one of the devotees there told me, he said that one time what the sultan was out playing golf with the other people. And, and what happened, you know, they, ha they have that club, and they have to swing the club and hit the ball, you know. So the sultan was swinging the club and he missed, you know. <laughs> he missed it, you know. <laughs> and and the, the, the one uh, servant who was there, he laughed, you know. When the sultan missed the, the ball, he laughed. The sultan did not appreciate. He took his golf club and he hit him, beat the guy on the head and killed him. But they could get away with things like that without any reaction. At least, at least in the past, I don't know about today, but the one man from Malaysia, he told me that this had happened like that one time. So they have some special e exemption from the laws of karma because of their position. Just like in Calcutta, there's, a, 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 there's the, the royal road. 
they built a special road which was meant just for the queen to come. When the queen would come from England, she was to drive down this road. It was meant for her. So <laughs> they, have, they have these funny policies. Like, of course, in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna also says, among monarchs, I, I am, I, among men, I am the monarch. Krishna says, Bhagavad in chapter 10, Vibhuti Yoga, opulences of the absolute. He said, among men, I am the monarch. And Prabhupada writes in the purport how the monarch is the representative of Krishna on earth. So they're given the, that kind of power, that kind of facility. Of course, they're only representatives of God. But it's, it, it's better, it's more proper that they actually follow the laws rather than disregard the laws. And Lord Krishna himself, generally, he would follow the laws, but sometimes also he would break the laws. Sometimes he would do things which are not considered proper. Just like uh, as a young child, he was the muck and chore. He was the butter thief. He was still the butter. Oh, he's stealing. And even, you know, some Christian people, they mock like this, that your God is a thief. <laughs> yeah, you know, they do not understand the nature of his pastimes that he's performing these activities for the pleasure of his devotees. It's simply the, a loving exchange between him and the other devotees, like the gopis, Mother Yashoda, and the other ladies in Vrindavan, that they enjoy all of these dealings with Lord Krishna, seeing Lord Krishna break the pots of butter and feed it to the monkeys, and Mother Yashoda chasing Krishna. It's all transcendental enjoyment for Krishna himself. Krishna's enjoying, and it's also very special enjoyment for Mother Yashoda and the other ladies who take part in all of these different leelas. And Lord Krishna also performed the act of ranchur. He left the battlefield. Now, when you go on the battlefield, you're expected to stay on the battlefield. To leave the battlefield is considered cowardly. So if Lord Krishna, what happened? Lord Krishna was fighting Jarasandha. And Jarasandha had come and attacked Mathura, uh, six, 16 times. And every time Lord Krishna had defeated them, com totally defeated them. And Jarasandha was left with no army. And Krishna said, go, just go. He said, I'm not going to kill you, you can just go. And Jarasandha came and attacked Mathura 16 times. And every time he was totally annihilated. But Krishna didn't kill him. And so Jarasandha was always encouraged by his other cohorts. They would say, oh, you were just unlucky. Try again. You, you're sure to be successful. In the, try again. So on the 17th occasion, when Lord Krishna came again, at that time another king also came, someone called Kala Yavana. He was a Yav, you could understand he was a low-born person. Anyway, he came with a huge army also to attack Mathura. And this was when Lord Krishna transferred all the people of Mathura, he transferred them all to Dwarka during the night. By his mystic potency, he moved it because Lord Krishna was concerned for the safety of his devotees. So he moved everyone from Mathura to Dwarka. And, uh, and then it happened that this Kalayavana came chasing Krishna. 
and the Lord Krishna left the battlefield. He, he left the battlefield to, he had a, another purpose in mind. He, he, he climbed up a mountain and went into a cave. And inside that cave, one man was laying sleeping. So what happened was Kala Yavana came chasing Krishna. He said, where did he go? Where did he go? I'll get him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill him. And he came chasing Krishna and he saw Krishna had gone inside the cave. So Kala Yavana also went into the cave. And it happened that he saw this person laying on the floor. And he thought, this must be Krishna. And he turned and kicked him. And the man woke up. And as soon as he woke up, fire came out of his eyes and burned Kalayavna to ashes. So this, the, this, this man who was actually, who had been asleep and who had been kicked to, and woken up, he, his name was Muchikunda. And Muchikunda was a great Kshatriya. He had been fighting on behalf of the demigods in the higher planets. The demigods needed someone to help them in their battle. And, the, and Muchikunda took the part and he had fought for a long time. Then after some time, then uh, uh, Murga came. And Murga is also a great warrior. So then the demigods told Muchikunda, you can stop now. Um, the, this uh, son of Lord Shiva, Murga, is here now. Kartikeya in North India, but in South India called Murga. So he came and Muchikunda was uh, told he could stop and go and take rest. And the demigods asked him, we will give you a blessing. Whatever blessing you want, you can ask. We want to give you a blessing for all the service you've done for us. So he said, just bless me that I can have a good rest. And if anybody wakes them up, fire will come from my eyes and burn them. And so the demigods granted this request. And Lord Krishna was aware of this. So that's why Lord Krishna had gone into the cave and this Kala Yavna had followed him and this Kala Yavna got burned to ashes when Lord Krishna went in there. But Jarasandha was there on the battlefield and he thought, ah, Krishna's run away. You see, he's a coward. So Krishna got the name Ranchur. And there's a temple, a famous temple in India. The deity is called Ranchurji. It's in uh, Gujarat. So uh, Lord Krishna sometimes gets a bad name. You know, he's Gopi Jana, Gopi, what's it? Gopi Vastrahari. He steals the clothes of the gopis. He does things like this. So th this is unusual. Does Krishna get karma for these things? No, of course not. Lord Krishna is the Supreme Lord. He's he is the dictator of the laws of karma. It's under his control. Lord Krishna doesn't get any reactions for any of his work. But we do. Because our attitude, we're doing things. Lord Krishna does these things for the pleasure of his devotees. We do things for our own pleasure. We are selfish. We, instead of being selfish, we should become selfless. We should become without material desires. So in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes like this. In the uh, seventh chapter, Lord Krishna is describing the material energy. And he describes how earth, water, fire, air, and ether, all together these eight, comprise my separated material energy. And then he says, Apariyamitas tvanyam prakritim vidime param jiva bhuta mahabaho yeidam daryate jagat. Lord Krishna is going on to describe another kind of prakriti. First he mentions the, the gross 
inert elements of the material nature. The earth, water, fire, air, ether. They are inert. They have no consciousness. But then Lord Krishna says, beside this prakriti, there is another prakriti which are all living entities. So the living entities, we are also prakriti. We're not purusha. Lord Krishna is the real purusha. We are the prakriti. We are the energy of Lord Krishna. And we're meant for his enjoyment. But, aparyamitasvanyam prakritim vidime jiva bhuta mahabaho yayedam daryateja. We're thinking this material energy is for our enjoyment. Because we are superior, we are the superior prakriti. We have consciousness. The table doesn't have consciousness. Floor doesn't have consciousness. We have consciousness. And we are thinking all of this material nature is for our pleasure. So this is our mistake. We are thinking that the whole material world is for our enjoyment. We are trying to exploit the resources of the material world. And we have to understand that it's not for our enjoyment but it's for us to use in the service of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. Prabhupada gives the example about the, the workers in the factory. You know, the workers in the factory, they cannot think that they're, that they're the proprietor of the factory. You're only the worker in the company. There's a proprietor. They enjoy the result. Our job is just to work, to do the, whatever they want, to make things. And, and, so. and the same way we're here in this material world, we're all meant to understand our position as servants of the Supreme Lord. He is the real enjoyer. We are just the servants. And our pleasure is in offering service to the Lord when we can please him. That is the greatest pleasure. Just like when we distribute books. If you can distribute a book to someone and make someone a, a Krishna conscious devotee, it's the greatest pleasure. It's the greatest satisfaction to be able to, to see someone take up Krishna consciousness. And that is naturally pleasing to a devotee. Then we, when we see other people come into Krishna's service, we want to bring the living entities from the material world, from material consciousness to spiritual consciousness. We want to create perfect harmony here in the material world. And we want to make, when the world becomes spiritual, then there will be harmony. We will be able to work together with each other. We need to have the common center, Krishna. Just like if you take some small stones and throw them into the pool, then there will be many circles, many different circles will come out from each of the stones when they fall in the water. And the different circles will all overlap with each other. But if you throw one big stone, then all the circles will come from the one center, from the one point. So when, the, when we have the common center, then there will be harmony and peace in the world. We want to put God in the center of all of our activities. And then the world can become a peaceful and happy place. Because we have forgotten God, therefore we are suffering. There's a statement, uh, Jagadananda Pandit said, uh, Krishna Bulya Jeev Anadir Bahir Mukha, Itaiva Maya Taradeya Samsara Dukkha. That we have forgotten Krishna, Krishna Bulya Jeev, Anadir Bahir Mukha. Anadir, since uh, 
there's a very long time ago, time immemorial, we have forgotten Krishna and we are simply looking at the bahirmuk, the external energy, the material energy. We're simply thinking about the material assets of life. We're not looking within. We're not thinking about our real self. So we have to try to get out of that conditioned state and come to the platform of devotee to understand ourselves as a spiritual being, a living entity, part and parcel of Lord Krishna. And we're meant to engage in his loving service. All right, we will stop and ask if there's any questions. Anybody? Yes, Prabhu. Yes, but we're not encouraged to do things like that. You know, if you ask your spiritual teacher, can I rob the bank for Krishna, he won't encourage you to do that. Sometimes devotees do some, some things, for example, speaking harsh words to someone or uh, doing some not, not very good things uh, in the name. Well, we have to understand Krishna's service is not just what we want to do, but we have to be guided by sadhu, shastra and guru. It's not just what I think Krishna wants. We have to do everything in the proper way, right? We follow in the footsteps of the great souls. Mahajano yena gata sapanta. Follow in the footsteps of the acharyas. What did Prabhupada tell us to do? What does Prabhupada want us to do? Prabhupada wants us, a devotee should be a perfect gentleman. How would you recognize a devotee? Prabhupada was asked, he was on television. He said, he will be a perfect gentleman. So if you say nasty words, harsh words, that's not being a gentleman. It's not very nice. No, we should be respectful and polite. We should be compassionate on people. People may not be very nice to us, not respectful and everything. But anyway, we tolerate. We see Krishna in everyone's heart. We have to see living entities as part and parcel of Lord Krishna. And we think how to help them to come to Krishna consciousness. Uh, even in the Christian tradition, they talk, if somebody hits you on one cheek, you turn the other cheek. Hmm? You don't fight back. Uh, they say, if, if you follow the principle of an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, then the result is everyone will be blind and nobody will have any teeth. <laughs> you know? that, that, if, you, if you try to follow that kind of principle, Mm, that's not the way. Rather, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching a Trinada Pisuni Chena, Amanina Manadena, offer all respects to others, not anxious for any respect for us, and tolerant like a tree. An ego, what should be our ego? Think of ourselves lower than the straw in the street. What? Because spiritually, what is our spiritual dimension? One ten thousandth of the tip of the hair. We're thinking, I'm six feet, I'm two meters, two meters tall. Yeah. That's the body, that's material ego, right? But spiritual ego is to understand I'm a tiny spirit soul, lower than the grass. That's the true ego. Mm -hmm. Yes, Prabhu? Not in the class, but 
you, you were in Denmark in the early 80s or so. Yeah, yeah. Why, how, what connection? Well, I was just doing Sankirtan. We were collecting funds for Bangladesh at the time. Oh, you were part of that? Hmm? You were part of that? Yes. Yeah, I came with Prabhavishnu, at that time it's Prabhavishnu Swami, and we came and we were collecting funds for Bangladesh. So that also part of the car, so Ilapati was there? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Ravi? Mm hmm Yeah. Il and Vyasaki also came. <laughs> Janmanda Goswami also came. Oh, yeah. mm. I don't know if they came in Denmark, but they went to Sweden, they went to Finland. Yeah. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai.